Hello, everybody, and welcome to a very, very, very early morning episode <laughs> of the Let's Talk Fortitude podcast with my with my great friend, my brother Larry Bowles, who has agreed to come back from a uh, location well, well into the Mediterranean Sea today, and. You betcha. Um, <laughs> we, got, talk we, about, got about, uh, we got about seven hours difference and you got the short end of that stick i'm afraid so it's early oh for my you gosh. it's midday afternoon for me so larry my my mouth and my voice is so big you could probably hear me if i took this microphone off it may take a little while to get over to where you are but but man i am so glad uh that you agreed to come back on last time we saw each other uh, we were at camp chioka yeah. And uh, man, what an experience. But hey, for those who don't, uh, I've invited Larry to come back and be part of the Pastoral View series uh, on influence and impact. And he has so graciously agreed. And but for those, Larry, that may not have seen your uh, your your episode that we shot last time, if you go back through and check the episodes, uh, you'll see the one there with Larry. Uh, and he talks more about what he did, where he's from and everything that he's done. But give us a quick overview of who Larry Bowles is and uh, and what you're you know where you're from where you, and what you're doing and uh, and we'll get started into this thing bro well Larry Bowles is an idiot uh, he uh, <laughs> and for some reason uh, Jesus has chosen to, to to speak through me I always say if if Jesus can speak through Balaam's donkey he can talk through a retired fireman so uh, that's that's where I was uh, 25 years in emergency management uh, in Tulsa Oklahoma I was a, retired as a fire captain there and uh, I always said you know being uh, a fireman is the best job in the world because you get to help somebody on the very worst day of their life and so uh, being being thrown into those uh, opportunities uh, to speak truth and life uh, to people uh, in those moments has always been a great blessing. And so search and rescue was uh, kind of my training. And uh, it didn't take me long to, to make the jump to understand that Jesus in, is in the same business. Uh, he came to seek and to save that which was lost. And so um that's it's just a continuation of the of the same thing so um you know we're we're this is a life is is great but it's a life and death business and uh, so trying to uh, proclaim life and proclaim truth uh, while the, while the breath is in our lungs is just uh it's a privilege and and so um, I, I don't know. It just, it, it's always come very, uh, naturally for me, spiritual firefighting and, and physical firefighting. Uh, and so it's, it's, it's one and the same. It's not, uh, you know, a place where Jesus is here and then he's not there, man, he's everywhere. And, uh, one thing that he's drilled into me over and over is that he is in the midst and in the middle, um, of every situation that you ever walk into, and nobody um, that that you encounter uh, has not had a knock on the door. That Revelation 3:20 thing um, is that all, you know. It's like Paul said in, in Romans that all people know of God because uh, He's made it plain. And now that the Holy Spirit has been poured out on all flesh, on all mankind, and Jesus says, "I'm knocking," uh, and whoever would get up and open that door. Um, and so that, it, you know, he's doing all the work. We're just, uh, all we are is witnesses. That's a, that, that's a fact. So how did you, when did you and Kathy uh, start your, your missionary work? Oh man, uh, I was a paramedic uh, for 25 years. And so I did a lot of medical missions uh, in Honduras and Mexico, Guatemala, places like that uh, growing up. Uh, actually the very last family vacation that uh, Kathy and I and, and our kids took um, before they all kind of moved off and got married and had babies and all that stuff was a, <laughs> a mission trip to Mexico. And we were digging latrines in a place called La Pesca. <laughs> <laughs> and, installing, and I built a bunch of outhouses and we dug a bunch of holes and, and uh, we, uh, there was uh, there was one lady. I mean, it's you know they're used to outhouses and latrines, but uh, I I took a whole bunch of toilet seats, uh, bought at Home Depot and and took them <laughs> there and installed them. And one lady opened the door and saw this, and she said, "Oh, she and she said it in Spanish, but she says, 
I am now complete. There was a toilet, <laughs> you know, just a piece of wood with a hole in it. So anyway, it's, it's that kind of stuff that, that kind of keeps you going. But uh, I, I love, I love uh, people that are appreciative I, because I, I'm so grateful. I'm just appreciative. And so when, when you, when you do things in the name of, in the name of Jesus and they, they know that poor, uh, Yo hago esto por la causa de Cristo. I do this for the cause of Christ, um, you know, and it's so uh, they know why you're doing it and in whose name you're doing it. And and it's just like Jesus said, is that, you know, if you give somebody a cup of cold water in my name, man, that's that's where the treasure of heaven is. And so uh, we we had a heart for missions very early on uh, and we did a lot of it. Uh, in Mexico and in, in Latin American countries. And then the drug war started uh, in, in 2009 and it became just untenable uh, for us to go down there. The cartels were watching these little villages and man, any money that was being spent down there just kind of um, put, put a laser focus on them. It put them in danger. So uh, they contacted us and said, you know, it's best that you don't come. And so we didn't, we didn't go for uh, three or four years, um, and we were just kind of uh, in a in an opportunity to come to Athens uh, to visit a guy that we knew that was over here, and we saw what Jesus was doing with the Muslim people that are are coming out of uh, Middle East and Northern Africa, and Athens is kind of the epicenter of what I guess you would call the refugee highway. Um, and so standing right here in Athens, um, it, it, it's part of the geography is Greece is just so porous. Uh, you know, it's just like a sponge. It's almost impossible to defend. There are 1,100 islands uh, in the Mediterranean Sea, just off the Turkish coast and then the Greek mainland. But uh, it's, it's like standing in a doorway and all the people that you know, are, are flowing along that highway in all these countries from all these countries that you can't get into. And Jesus is bringing them right to you. And so um, I often tell people that we, you know, we, I haven't led anybody to Christ over here. All I've done is just is receive those that, that he has sent to me. They come to me looking for him because they've had some kind of a, a, a knock on the door or a, a dream or an encounter. And that is uh, ever since that, and I mean, this is this is what we've done, uh, because this is clearly not uh, not something that we've ever aspired to or even expected. But um, this is something that he is doing, and so he invites us to kind of be participants with him in what he's doing, uh, and just to be you know salt and light, and and to be witnesses. How many so, countries? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Ask how question. many countries? How many countries do you see? You typically, just cut out, many, John. How many? Can you have you got me now? Yep, I do. Okay. Uh, how many countries do you typically see refugees from there where you're at? What, we've encountered. The, we've encountered people from, to my last count, about 22 different Muslim countries right here in Athens. Wow. And so, um, you know, there's there's the, you know, the top five, but uh, there's Iran, uh, there's Iraqis, there's Syrians. Uh, Afghanistan is probably the number one people group, Afghans. Um, and then we get a lot of Arabic speakers out of uh, out of Libya and, and North, I mean, sub-Saharan, you know, northern Africa. So, yeah, it's it's, it's amazing. You got to not that we know these languages, but uh, we, you know, we find people that can that can interpret. So uh, I heard somebody say the other day, it was at, uh, it was at one kingdom Sunday uh, and it was George uh, got up and said, he told a joke. He said, if you speak three languages, uh, you're trilingual. If you speak two languages, you're bilingual. If you speak one language, you're an American. And, <laughs> you know, it's kind of, so everybody speaks more, more than, uh, more than, uh, one language here, but uh, yeah, it, English is kind of the common default. And so I, I think in the last podcast, we talked about some of the video work that we do. Uh, and Javad, my ministry partner here, is speaking Farsi, and then I'm speaking in English. And so those 
are not only being used in Iran and Afghanistan and other places, but they're being used in Europe because we'll have people come through here and obey the gospel, get baptized, and then they go into Germany or, you know, any of the other other European countries and they walk into churches and say, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer. And they're just like, where did you come to faith? Well, it was in Athens. And, and so they've written us as like, what do we do with these people? And so they're using these discipleship and evangelism videos that we do here because they can understand me in English and then the people that are there can understand Javad and Farsi. So it's, you know, <laughs> it's, it's amazing what the Lord's doing with it. Well, you talk about impact. Uh, you're off again. So you talk about, I know what it is. I'm not close okay. enough to this, Mike. It, okay. It's uh, you, you uh, I guess it's voice activated. That, that's probably how it doesn't pick up stuff around me. Okay. Um, but you talk about impact. I mean, mm. that's that that's going to be a lasting impact, Larry, that, that that you guys have done that even whenever you and Kathy someday decide, you know what, it's time for us to. Can you you got me now? I don't know what's going on with this crazy thing. There you go. I got you now. I don't know what's going on with this thing. It's bouncing all over the place today. Okay. I've wore it out, brother. You are number you're number <laughs> six this week. Wow. And I've, yeah, you and I've got another and I've got another one tonight. That'll be number oh seven this week. Wow. So uh and then I've got a couple over the next few weeks. Our my wife's mom and dad are here, so I'm gonna kind of take a little bit of a sabbatical. Still not hearing me, huh? Yeah, I am now. You're you're cutting in and out. So I don't know what's wrong well, with this crazy well, thing. We need to hold our tongues just right, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> so so anyway. Uh, the lasting impact of what you guys are going to do or what you all are doing is going to be incredible. And that way, someday when you and Kathy decide, you know, hey, it's time for us to go back to Oklahoma and 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 just start worrying about, you know, visiting with these grandkids and the kids and, and you know, just take a deep breath and enjoy life and travel a little bit. The impact of what you all are doing now will go on for forever, brother. And that's, you talking yeah. about influence and an impact, which that imp the main impact, like you say, comes from, from Christ. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're the influencer. We're, yeah. you know, we're, we're not the impactor, but the impact that Christ is that you're having for Christ through those, through that type of ministry is absolutely incredible. And and it's uh, it's an amazing work that you guys are doing. Well, it's you know, it's one thing to, to get started in this. It's entirely another thing to try to figure out how to get out of it. <laughs> like you said, <laughs> you know, when, when are we ever going to we uh, when we started this, we thought, well, OK, we'll do this. We'll commit for three years. And so we're, we're completing our 12th year now. Uh, and so it's just, it's, I can't imagine uh, because all the people that we are now, we now support out of our mission funding in full-time ministry, uh, five uh, refugee families that are now in full-time ministry. They don't, you know, they don't need an interpreter. And the idea was never for like the Acro Center, just a name. I had to call this something. It's not an organization. Kathy and I are, you're looking at the entire organization. And so sitting here in this little apartment, <laughs> it's not about building an organization. It's always been about replacing ourselves. And we've done that over and over. And so really our ministry now, uh, they are they are reaching the masses. And our ministry is to continue to, to pour in uh, to them and, and shepherd uh, them. And I mentioned this in the, in the last podcast. I get asked to speak on two subjects all the time, and I don't do either of these things, is leadership training and church planting. And, you know, it, it, everybody's real big on church planting. And the, the thing of it is, is that if you plant churches, it doesn't mean you're going to get disciples. But if you make disciples, guess what you're going to get? You're going to get churches and you don't have to plant them. And then within those, Jesus raises up uh, the leaders in that and equips them. And so our job is to continue that discipleship and that shepherding and that. And uh, I mean, because they're, these guys, they're I mean, <laughs> they probably got more hours of biblical training now than I do, uh, you know, and and uh, they're always after me about what's next, what's next, what's next. And so um, 
I, I get probably, I don't know, 10 emails a day from all these guys going, okay, I had a question on this and, you know, out of Genesis five or, you know, usually the question you, you'll see a refugee coming to you and he's got his finger in a Bible, you know, and, <laughs> and you're, you're like, okay, that's either going to be in Genesis revelation or in first and second Corinthians. That's exactly where those, those questions all come from. So everybody's trying to figure out uh, their theology and, and, and all of that. Well, you know, when you guys I can hear you now, is it coming back? You got me now. I have not got you. Let me see. We're on a delay here. I don't know what in the world is going on with this crazy mic. Let me try something here, Larry. Nope. Not yet. Is it coming in now? No. Let me try this. I don't Let know. Me. I think it's a I think it's a connection. Well, we'll just have to keep trying, bro. Maybe it'll Hello. You got me now? Anything? No. Huh? Oh, there you are. I got That's, you now. Okay. Uh, okay. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so John Maxwell and people, mm -hmm. please be patient with us. You got to understand we're, we're thousands of miles. We're halfway around the world from each other. Uh, so about, it, six, uh, about 6,000 miles. So, <laughs> yeah. So John Maxwell in his training, whenever I was doing it, made the statement that he, when in one of his first churches that he went into in, in the Midwest, when he got there and, and through the ministry and growing the church and the leadership that whenever he stepped away, the church fell apart. And he mm -hmm. said, that was not success. He said, that was failure. Mm -hmm. He said, a, a successful leader will be able to build a business or be able to come in and, and grow a church or whatever it may be. But he said, you, and you surround yourself with people where you're weak so that you, so that you're, you, you, you complete you and it makes you strong. But he said the, a successful leader, when he steps away, steps outside of that circle, right. if it continues to grow or to be or to it continues to grow or, or continues to succeed, he said that's success. So right. what you're doing, I say that to say this is with you, what you're saying, what I hear you saying is now that you as long as you've been there, you're starting to see other people come in and take over now. Okay. This crazy microphone, bro. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, can you, can you still can't hear me? I, I got you now. I got you now. So, yeah. So for you two, the good thing is you come across loud and clear. We're not, I'm not, you're not losing me. So okay. I'm not losing you. So what you're saying okay. is good, but okay. it's really good to see that these people, what you're doing over there now is when you, it looks like when you and Kathy do decide to step away, you've got the right people in place. You've done the right things that when you do step away, that thing's going to keep going. Right. Right. And that's the problem with with building an organization where you're, you know, you tightly control everything and, and you, you know, it, it, you, I, I guess people want something that can't function without them. I, I want something that functions better without me. And as a fire captain, my true measure of my ability to lead that crew was not in how they performed when I was on the scene. It was it was how they performed when I was gone. Uh, and and so if you're not, you know, if you're not teaching and we in the fire service, we always used to say we want to leave that wood pile higher than we found. it. And that's that's what uh, sowing in the kingdom is. This is Luke chapter eight. You know, we're just slinging it with both hands. And when when that good soil, uh, you know, that seed hits that good soil and it is watered and nurtured. It, it it produces a crop that's 30, 60, even 100 times that which was sown. Uh, and yeah, I just, I, I don't know that business operates that way. And, you know, the church, of, the church of Jesus Christ is not a business. It's a kingdom. That's uh, right. He is the only king. And so I just think that we waste a lot of time, a lot of resources trying to build our little, our little kingdoms. And we need to get out of the way. Uh, and let him produce that growth of 30, 60 or 100 times. And so that's that's our goal. And again, we're we're trying to get out of the way. Uh, and we 
he won't seem to i just know how he is man he won't let me won't let me loose here so anyway but we we will always be involved in in i mean as long as i'm drawing breath on these planet on this planet i'm going to be involved in these guys lives and their ministry even if i'm just on the computer you know on my deathbed or whatever i'm going to be uh, encouraging and pouring into them as much as I can. So there, there, you know, it's, it's, uh, the thing about bringing people, uh, out of darkness into light and discipling, they, they become yours, you know, I mean, these yeah. are my kids, uh, man, I got kids and grandkids from all over the planet now, you know, and they're just, uh, um, it, yeah, it, it's just, um, like, that, that's what we, we use the word brother or sister all the time. But when we've been crucified with Christ and we no longer live, I mean, that that means that we you and I, John, are connected by the blood of Christ. And we we know each other. We're acquaintances. But, man, there's so much deeper stuff going on than that in the fact that the way the spirit uh, communicates between us uh, the way that we are bound together. Or, and, and the Bible calls it being yoked equally, equally yoked. Yes. Don't, don't be unequally yoked. And we take that to the like, well, do you believe this? And just exactly the way that's not what that's talking about. It is understanding that you have been bought with a price. You're no longer your own and you belong to Jesus. And so does that person. And exactly. Uh, yeah. So when we when we do an Acro Center class, I sit down and I'll have people from Iran that have done university work there. And then I'll have people from Afghanistan who have never been in a classroom in their life. Uh, some most can read. They've taught themselves how to read. I have had students that could not read. And so I've had to assign other students to help them with the reading uh, portion of all of that. And they turn out to be some of the best students I've ever had uh, because they get it and they're appreciative and they want to learn. Uh, in the fire academy, I'd have the academy call and say, you know, who do you want out of this class of 24? You know, and I'm like, I don't want the smartest. I don't want the fastest. I want the guy that wants to be there the most, because if, if I get that guy, he wants to learn and he'll be the greatest you know, fireman there is. And so uh, I want a, a teachable spirit. Um, I am a lifelong learner and I don't care where I'm at. If the gospel is being preached out of that pulpit, I'm going to learn something. I don't care how bad the delivery is. I don't care about anything else. Um, I am going to learn because I want to pursue Christ. I want to know him and I'm just in a dead run after him. And so um, you, the deeper you look into scripture, the more you find. You never come to the end of it. Uh, and I always say that the, the, the parables that Jesus spoke are like diamonds because diamonds um, are, are, I guess, the hardest you know, thing on the planet. They're unaffected by time. They're unaffected by outside forces like temperature, heat, cold, any of that kind of stuff. They're unchanging. But yet when you take a diamond that's cut and polished and hold it up to the light, you'll never twice see that array of light the same way. You'll always see a new glimpse of, of something beautiful in that diamond. And that's the way parables are. And everybody will, you'll, you can attest to this. You'll read oh, something absolutely. a thousand times. And then it's like, I have never seen that laying there. Why? You know, because there's always something new and something rich. And so I think that many times we lose the awe and the wonderment of, of the beauty of God's word. Uh, Hebrews 4.12 says that the word of God is alive. It's active and it's a double edged sword that cuts both ways. Any way it moves, it just lays me in half. And it says it, it, it divides us even to the point of soul and spirit. And we think that we read the Bible. And it goes on to say it doesn't stop there. It, it says that it judges the thoughts and intentions of the human heart. And so we think we read the Bible. We don't. The Bible reads us. And, it, you know, Scripture is designed and built to do one thing, and that's cut you in half, shove you in a corner, and make you choose. And that's the way Jesus disciples us. That's heavenly discipleship. So uh, he is always going to honor 
I, I tell these refugees, the only thing that God is obligated to give you is the desire of your heart. And they kind of like, really? And they're thinking in physical terms. So I'm like, absolutely. If the desire is your own self-will and money and power and, you know, corruption in this world, man, he'll let you have it. And your cup of wrath will be full and the plug will be pulled. But if desire of your heart is Christ in you, the hope of glory, he will move heaven, earth, and hell to make that happen for you. Yeah. That is really, that's really, you got me? Can you yeah, hear me? Yeah, I've got you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have, to, I have yeah. to check now. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't stop moving. You keep moving. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, there's, um, that that's amazing how, you know, that, that you say that because in the last two podcasts that I've done, it's with pastors. Both of them have their the, uh, their doctor from Das. Uh, from Dallas Theological Seminary, mm -hmm. and they both said, and I've experienced this whenever I preached, that you, you know, you preach your heart out, you preach a sermon, you go up, somebody comes and says, when you said such and such about such and such, it really spoke to me, and they walk away, and you're like, I didn't say that. Right. And then you go back, and, and both of them said they go back, and they've gone back and listened to sermons mm -hmm. where people have said they heard something. That, I didn't say that. Right. So it's amazing. And both of these guys, I'm so blessed. I watch them. They're both from Monroe. Louisiana, by the okay. way. All my connections are there. Whites Ferry <laughs> Road has just that's where my community is. Even though okay. I'm in parish, that's my uh, other than okay. Todd down in uh down in Lake Okeechobee. I'm going to see him tomorrow. But okay. anyway, uh, uh the thing about the and I, that I've mentioned to both of them that I love about what they do and what they preach, they preach um expository. Mm -hmm. uh, they 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 preach the word, they don't preach ideas, they don't preach Right. Their beliefs, they, they don't preach at somebody. They right. preach the word of God and let it speak. Right. And when you do that, if when Larry and John do that, just like you did, I and preach, preach and I, it was like being in a Bible study, brother. You preached the word of God. And, that, and what happens is then John and Larry aren't the ones convicting somebody. We're right. not trying to scare somebody into heaven. Right. The Holy Spirit through the word of God that's being preached is the one doing the convicting. And that's when people he hear things that aren't being said because God's speaking directly to them. That's exactly right. Every, you know, somebody will have a objection to something you say, well, if it's my opinion, man, they're going to have a ton of objections and they're going to be founded in those. But if I am speaking his words and his truth, and, you know, I'm, I'm like, you're not arguing with me. You know, this is uh, this is this is Jesus Christ saying this. This is uh, the word of God in the flesh uh, speaking these red letters. Heaven and earth will pass away, but these words will never pass away. He said these aren't words. These, these are truth and they are life. They're spirit and they're life. And so, yeah, I, I just I just think that we, you know, in 12 years, we've seen a lot of um missionaries come through Athens. Um, and, and the thing of it is, is the missionology that works in other places just does not work in, in this refugee environment. And so we've had just a big, big, I could, I could name names and you'd be like, wow, that's a big group that comes in well-known, well-financed and all that. And they'll be here a year. And I had a guy that, you know, opened up this kind of a coffee shop, uh, you know, come and study. Let's start talking kind of a deal. He was here a year and he's like, I'm out of here. And I said, why? He said, man, this is hard. I said, yeah, yeah, it's hard. I said, refugee ministry is the it's the worst because uh, most mission models, you know, lay out, especially the inductive, you know, uh, ideas and that sort of thing. They're, they're, they work great in African villages where the, that's their home. You come in and you present and you give them Bibles and let them discover truth. And that's fine. That doesn't work here. Uh, and so every mission model that people uh, are accustomed to and try here just doesn't work. And so we have tried a lot of different things and some things work, some things don't. And when it doesn't work, you, you go to plan B or C or, you know, just on down the alphabet. But um, where there is no book on how to do refugee missions in a in a, 
a flow environment because nobody comes to Athens to stay. There's nothing here for them. They're all leaving next week. If you can do it, they're all trying to get into you know other parts of Europe because the economy's bad. There's no jobs here. There's no life for them here. And as soon as they get out of that rift on Lesbos Island, where we're going tomorrow, you know, there's there's 4,000 new refugees this summer that are there in, in Moria camp. And that's who we're going to be talking to. We're going to be presenting Jesus words, not Larry Bowles words down there. And, uh, you know, and so, yeah, we covered your prayers as we, as we go do that. But, uh, a guy that, that I brought to Christ here in Athens is now in full-time ministry, right, right there on Lesbos. And so he is, he's, uh, a guy I'll be working with uh, tomorrow and all of next week. So, uh, but, it's just an opportunity. Uh, again, they they all have that knock on the door. They all know uh, of who Jesus is, and then they come to you looking looking for answers. And that's what being a witness is. And so it's not that hard. But people come here and they'll try to preach a bunch of denominational doctrine because that's what they're getting fed, you know, in in their little home church. And they'll try that over here, and they'll just look at them like. That there's no life in that. And so don't, you know, this is not religion. This is truth and life. And, and those words of Christ are truth and life. They are spirit and life. And, and so I, I do not have a single word to say that is valid, but Jesus does. And so right. when, when I speak his words, people listen. Uh, and when I speak my own, they don't. So, yeah. And, you know, you talk about uh, you talk about the uh, the missionaries that come over there. And, and, mm -hmm. and I'm sure I'm sure Burley wouldn't care for me to talk about him. I actually called him uh, on, and talked to him about 45 minutes or he actually yeah. called me yeah. and he's going to come on. If we can work it out, I'm going to try to make a trip to. By the way, anybody listen to this, if Larry don't go looking for Larry on Lesbos Island, because by the time this by, by the time this posts, he's probably going to be back in Oklahoma. Cause that's so, right. Just, just so right. you know. We come um, and go. We're, we're and in I, and we're out. In and out. Yeah, that's right. And I, I don't need, I don't need, I don't need the wrath of Kathy coming down on no, me. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but, but if you look at Burley and anybody that knows uh, Burley Jen Jennings was, mm -hmm. that's as part of the, the original duck men with Phil Robertson. If you'd see this guy, he's about what six four, six six, six five, something yeah. like that. He's huge. He looks all see sixty three years old. Looks like he could still play today. Oh, I think he um, could. And yeah, he's played, he's played a, for OU, by the way. Yeah, he sure did. Yeah. But played linebacker. If that tells you what yeah. we're talking about here. Yeah, yeah. But and he's he Burley. If you see him, you see why he got it. How he got his name. That's and true. And he's an RN. Mm -hmm. You 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 don't become an RN without having a heart of service. That's right. Or to he have is, a servant's heart. He is a teddy bear. Uh, when Jesus got a hold of him, he turned this this beast into a, into a teddy bear. But uh, he has got a witness. Uh, he has got a testimony. And he's got a heart that is just enormous. So he's a great man. Yeah. And so whenever I got him on the phone, because he told me on the phone, he said, John, I was in a cloud uh mm -hmm. I, you know, at the retreat, uh, he really couldn't remember if I was a, a, a treater or if I was a teamer. And I said, I was a right. teamer, but, mm -hmm. but he remembered, you know, he remembered me, remembered who I was, but he said, but to talk to him on the phone, he was a totally different guy. And I'm like, Holy cow, mm -hmm. I have got to get this guy on. So we're trying to work something out when he comes in to hunt with those guys there. And uh, the second week of December, we're hoping to be, uh, back in uh, Louisiana to we're going to spend about five or six days and we're just going to record as hard and as fast as we can with we'll just shoot as many okay. as we can different okay. people. But, but we're, I said that to say this <clears throat> servants, as I don't think you and I talked about this the first time. It's all about your heart. If you have to follow your heart, if your heart is not for the refugees that are coming out of those countries to work in Athens, I, yeah. I, I so here I'll tell you. So I told my daughter-in-law, "Hey, if I can, while I'm in Europe and Larry's in Athens, 
when we go to Germany, I'd like to take a day trip and fly down. Because they said, when you once you're there, to get plane tickets to fly somewhere, it's not that expensive or as right. expensive as it right. is here. Uh, um, said, yeah, Ryanair is kind of like uh, uh, Southwest here, and it's you can fly pretty cheap. And so I said, I'd like to go down. She said, you do not want to go to Athens, Greece in the summertime. No, said, that's rough. It is hot as fire. Yeah. <laughs> Well, As you, you're from West Monroe, you know, it's not, it's not dissimilar. So, yeah. Well, <laughs> well, well, Parish, Florida. I mean, my yeah. goodness. I mean, so mm -hmm. it's, I'm used to heat, but we'll, we'll talk about that uh, uh, at another, at a later date. But my whole thing with there was, is that it's a matter of the heart of where, if your heart's not in what you're doing, then you're not necessarily where God wants you to be. You need to find where, you, where your heart's right. at. Where, where right. God's got your heart leading. And, right. and so <clears throat> you and I have, you know, talked, this is the second time you've been on. We, we had to retreat all that time to talk mm -hmm. and, and, and to, to get to know each other. And I'm amazed at how you and Kathy do this together. This is not you. You don't right. drag her to Athens, correct? No, no, no. Not at all. It's it's us together. It's just there. There's you know, man. I tell you, she can reach into the heart of the women here. Um, you know, I I I do. I speak uh, to men, and having a little gray hair on your on your chin doesn't doesn't hurt any. Uh, and when you're dealing in an Afghan or Iranian culture, they will listen to you. But she uh, has a way of reaching the heart of, of an Afghan or Iranian female that, that I don't. Uh, and so she, you know, they'll listen to me. They'll listen to the teaching and they, you know, they love the Lord and then they see Christ in her and it somehow completes uh, something for them. And so there's a, you know, everybody has got their own uh, gift uh, in, in reaching somebody uh, who, I mean, going back to Phil Robertson, man, that guy was a miserable human being. Uh, you know, if we just seen the blind movie yeah. and we saw the past, uh, but man, when Jesus got a hold of him, he had the ability to speak into the lives of people in a way that, that you and I could never do. Uh, but you have the ability, John, to speak into the lives of people that, that nobody else can. And so everybody is uniquely, uh, well, they're, you know, beautifully and wonderfully made, but they're uniquely gifted for the people. Again, I don't, I don't bring people to Christ. He brings them to me. And then once he brings to me, somehow I can just speak into. And, and I think that we make evangelism or being just witnessing, sharing the gospel so hard and so complicated. And everybody's like, oh, I don't know enough. No, you do. If you know Christ, you have everything that you need. All good preaching is, and it's not even preaching. All good witnessing is, is telling other people what Jesus has done for you. And if you've never allowed Jesus to do anything for you, you got nothing to preach about. You got exactly. nothing to witness about. And so this is just like Peter in the upper room. You know, he's like, there's no way you're going to wash my feet. And it's like, well, you can't have any part of me. And he's like, well, just hose me down, man, from the head to my feet. Um, and so being ministered to by Christ is the absolute quickest way to understand who Jesus is and the absolute quickest way to have influence and impact in the lives that he's bringing these people to you. You're not going out and finding these people. I just, I, I quit evangelism years and years ago. I just deal with the ones that he puts in my path. And then I give him permission to interrupt, totally wreck my day. You know, I've got this meeting here. I've got this Zoom call here. I've got to be over here. And then somebody shows up in, in, in my path and they want to talk about Jesus. I was like, okay, I didn't arrange this. He did. And so I have to be obedient uh, to allow him uh, to arrange those divine appointments, we call them. You know, I, I don't think anything's really happening by accident, especially being in this business so long. 
He, he works all things together for good. We have a God who has the audacity to say, I will work all things together for good for those that love me and are called according to his purpose. And he's, he's working that person on this side of the planet with this side of the planet. And he's going to make this connection. And all you got to do is just tell them how wonderful Jesus is and what he's done in your life. And that's how the kingdom is multiplying one disciple at a time. He's allowing you and Kathy to have an influence on those refugees so that he can have the impact. Exactly. That's how yeah. it works. Yeah, exactly. We don't, we don't impact. And everybody's like, well, how can I impact the millions? Well, the kingdom, you, you look at Jesus' entire plan. Yet at the ascension, he's looking down and he's like, you know, he's going up into the air and there's 11 guys standing there. And did he get halfway up and go, yeah, those guys clearly are not ready. You know, I'm going to go back down. No, he didn't. I mean, that's his whole plan. Uh, he didn't, he didn't build an organization. He made disciples who would make disciples. And I think that when we stray from that and we try to formulize things and we try to organize things and over-organize things, it, it's a hindrance to actually what, what the Lord is trying to do in us. Um, the gospel is powerful and it is impactful when, when we don't present it in a, in a framework that fits with our little theology, you know, theological box, you know, and who's in and who's out and we're making all the decisions. You're, that's not what Luke 8 says. A sower went out to sow a seed and he's slinging it with both hands. And it has nothing to do with the seed. The seed's powerful, whether it hits the concrete, whether it hits the rocks or the thorns or the good soil. It's all about the good soil. And so when we see it spring up in that good soil, when we see right. it spring up, that is when we pour and we cultivate and we water into it. And that's why I don't do you know leadership training, because he's, <laughs> he's doing that. All I'm going to do is pour and fertilize into that. What I see, what I see coming out of that person. So um, I just, I, I want to be able to, when you're talking about influence or impact, Jesus does the impact, but the influence, the only influence I ever have is that I, I want to be able to not say a word, walk through a grocery store. And I want Jesus life in me to be so evident that people can see it. You know what I'm saying? In the way that I, know. I the way that I interact, the way that I carry myself, the way that, <clears throat> that I'm walking down, I want people to see Jesus alive in me. And so um, you know, if I can do that uh in a conversation, that's great. If I can do that in an act of kindness, that's great. And it's like, why'd you do that? Well, because of Jesus, you know. So um, just, you know, he opens doors to us all the time and we look inside and look around and go, well, I don't really see anything there. No, just walk through it. You know, he's, he's opened that door for you. Um, I think that we have a tendency to walk through doors, uh, and then ask him to follow us inside. I don't want to walk through a door. He is not leading the way in. And so well, where, yeah. where, whether I go or, or what I say, I want to, I want him to take the lead. Well, that's me, Larry. Uh, <clears throat> I want to I want to have more of an influence on people by them seeing Christ in me than anything I would ever say. Right. And, you know, what did Christ when he was on the earth? You know, the Pharisees and, uh, you know, uh, they were they were telling him, say, hey, you guys, they, you all didn't even wash your hands before you ate. And he said, you're worried. Right. You're worried about being clean on the outside when the inside of you is about dirt trash. Right. You know, right. I mean, you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're horrible on the inside. Well, <laughs> how many people out here are walking around? They're beautiful on the outside, but man, they are, they're just, they're dead on the inside. Right. And I, I don't want to be that. I don't want to be that person. I want to, I want my wife, when I walk in, I want her to be able to watch me, what I watch on TV or, or what I'm reading or, uh, just how I carry my actions, how I treat her and how I treat others around me. Uh, and the guys at work, how do I react to certain situations? Am I going right. to blow up, you know, and, and, and be ugly and mean? And then, oh, by the way, I'm going to pray for you today. Uh, no, yeah. I don't want to be that guy. I want them to say, hey, when things start to go bad in their life, I want them to come and say, John, 
Mm -hmm. Man, there's something different about you. Can I, 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 could we yeah. tell me about it? That that's the, right. that's the John I want to be. That's, that's the cry. Exactly that, right. That's Christ inside of me. And that's I, that's exactly I, right. At, at the fire station, you know, you're there 24 hours. You can't leave. And there's, you know, eight or, or 12 other guys there with you. And you're, you're the only Christian in the house. So it's game on. OK. And so what they're going to do is they're going to squeeze you for 24 hours to see, you know, what what comes out. And uh, that <laughs> I mean, it was it was kind of a, you know, if we're not fighting fire, that's what you do. It's a prank. And, you know, you're, yeah. you're just jabbing each other all the time. I'm sure the military was like that as well. It's the exact but, same way. But, but I always tell people that that you know, that the world is built and designed to do one thing. And it is to squeeze you, to make you see your need for Christ. And then when you come to Christ, guess what the world does? It squeezes you to see what's going to come out of you. And so it is, it is seeking truth in you all the time. People are seeking truth in you all the time. And, and so when we get back to the idea that I'm, I want to use Jesus words and not mine, everybody is walking around, everybody's on, you know, Instagram or Facebook or whatever, and they want to be heard, man. They want to have a voice. They, they're trying to be influencers, you know? Well, I, I don't want to be, I don't want to have a voice. What I want to be is an echo. That's good. Does that make sense? Like when That's you, when good. you, when you walk in like one of these Greek Orthodox churches, or if you go to Italy and the, you walk in these huge uh, cathedrals, man, those things are designed to do one thing, and that is reflect sound. And so you walk in there, and I, I, I love to sing in those places if I can get away with it without being run out or whatever. <laughs> but it, it, it's it's that dwelling place, you know, that, that it just bounces around and bounces off. I, I I want Christ to be bouncing off of me like one of those cathedrals all the time. And so I don't want a voice. I want to be an echo. Uh, and I want to walk into situations knowing that Jesus is there. There's not a, 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 a horrible situation that I can walk in. In the fire service, man, I've been in a lot of evil uh, activity. Uh, you can imagine responding to, you know, shooting and stabbing and gangs and fighting and all. It's just awful. But when you walk in that room, you can feel the evil hanging in the air. But you know that Jesus is in that room. And so I am looking for him in that moment. I'm looking uh, for for how he is impacting the people that are in that situation. And so I, I want to have eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart that wants to follow Christ. Uh, I want to take up my cross and I want to follow him through that door. I'm not, I'm, I'm done with trying to ask Jesus to follow me. I'm, I, I want, I want to follow him. And so. Tony Evans has a, in his book, uh, uh, kingdom men rising. It starts out. And one of the things he says is he wants to live his life in a way that when he wakes up in the morning and puts his feet on the floor, there's a siren goes off in hell that says, Hey, you better get ready because Tony's feet's on the floor. Yeah. yeah. That's the type of life I want to live. And I, I want to, and, and, and when you, when you take your feet off, you lay down, go to sleep and the, you know, you know, the evil side of things, it's like, shoo, we can rest for about five minutes. You know, as long as he's mm -hmm. sleeping, we can rest. That's the type yeah. of life I want to live, Larry. I want to live one that whenever I'm up, uh, hell's on alert. That, that yeah. John's here to 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 take away everybody that he can from that and 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 impact them or have an influence in their life so that Christ can impact them for the kingdom, right? Uh, and and that's uh it, and I was reading this morning and I listen. I want to be respectful of your time. We got about ten minutes left. But I was reading this okay. morning in Luke. It's amazing how the other guys were, and it's it was at the. Um, Oh my goodness, where was this? Oh, here we go. So it's Luke 15 and it's 10. It's in the end, it's at it's at the end of one of the parables where Christ is talking about how you go out, you know, if you have a sheep that's lost, you're going to go find it, and how you rejoice when you find the one. And talks about how the woman loses, you know, a coin and and when she finds it, she celebrates. And the very yeah. last verse of that of that um, parable it says, 
Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Right. Over one. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say thousands. It doesn't say two. It doesn't say a hundred. It says one. One at a time. And if I can, and that's what we're doing, Larry, one at a time. And, I, you know, people say that, you know, Jesus talked about the narrow gate and the and the narrow road and the broad gate. And and I may have said this last time on, on the podcast, you know, that that uh, the broad road doesn't have a big arching sign over it that says highway to hell. No, You'd, nobody would ever, you know, jump on that. But it that narrow road and I mentioned that in that sermon uh uh, the other day at WFR, death is that narrow gate. My death. I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. Death is that narrow road. That's what keeps me following Christ. And when I get off of that, I start asking him to follow me in my direction instead of following him. Understanding that I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. Keeps me on on that narrow road. And the Holy Spirit, his, his sole function is for to get me to keep my eyes on Christ. He proclaims Christ. And when I step off that path, he screams inside of me. It's like, man, don't take your eyes off Jesus. Get back on that road. But the kingdom of heaven, we we want masses, masses, masses. The kingdom of heaven is a turnstile. It is one person at a time. Um, and then, you know, Mark eight twenty nine, Jesus asked this question that rings across the fabric of humanity, always will and always, you know, has, is that who do you say that I am? And I'm going to say, well, John Garrett said this. He's like, no, I don't care. Well, Larry Bowles said, no, I don't. Who do you? This is about me and you. Who do you say that I am? I don't care what your church says. I don't care what your pastor says. This is about me and you. And we cannot, when we're talking about influence and impact, I cannot influence or impact somebody that does not want to be influenced or impacted. I may be able to trick them temporarily, which there's a lot of that going on, and and deceive them. But truth and life is, is narrow, and it is only found in the words of Christ, and it happens one heart at a time. And if you look at the entirety of, of, of the New Testament, when, man, when you get to the seven churches in Asia in Revelation uh, 2 and 3, this is Jesus talking not to non-believers. He's talking to people in churches, and he is saying, man, you guys play church great. But here's the problem. You just don't love me anymore. Remember the height. Remember where you began, yeah. the height from which you have fallen. Um, and, and you know, it, it, it's like you guys are claiming to be following me, but you're blind, wretched, you know, pitiful and naked. Does that sound like salvation language to you? I don't think it does, you know. And, and can you be spit out of the mouth of God and still be OK? No. I don't want to be lukewarm. I want to be hot or I want to be cold. And that's what he says. And, and, and we, we, <laughs> we lose sight of the fact that Jesus makes demands in our life. And he calls us to follow him, to daily deny ourselves, take up our cross and follow him. That means, hey, we're going up this hill and we may get crucified today. Are you in? Right. You know, and so uh, count the cost, he says, count the cost. Uh, I didn't come to bring peace. I came to bring division. I came to bring a sword. I'm going to turn families, uh, you know, apart from each other over this issue. This is a treasure hidden in a field. It's a pearl of great price. Uh, He he was not willing to give everything for this. Not worthy of me, Jesus says. Wow, these are hard words. And so once we get over ourselves enough to die to ourselves and come to cross, Uh, come to the cross and crucify ourselves with Christ and follow Christ. That is what puts us on that narrow path. And that is the path that leads to life and every other path leads to destruction. That's amazing. That's a, that's amazing. I can't think of a, I can't think of a better thing to stop on right there. I mean, I I, I don't know how we're going to top that. That's, and, and I tell you what, folks, if you, just go back through. You can search him. If you just put in Larry Bowles on a shame podcast, I mean, you'll see Larry's on there. And Larry 
teaches classes at WFR. He's on their website. If you go back and check their videos or go to YouTube to WFR, <clears throat> there's several things on there. And I love to listen to him teach because he teaches the Bible. He teaches the, the, the scripture. Uh, he, he preaches Christ, him crucified and what he's done for us. And it's, it's through him and him alone that it's not of anything that we do. But it's only right. through Christ and His blood on Calvary. Hey, I got a couple of quick questions I want to ask you before we get out of here. And you okay. better be careful because Kathy, okay. you, if only four hundred square feet, she could be listening to you. Well, no, if she's you, at the she's at the grocery store right now. So <laughs> okay, so you're safe for you're safe, safe for airs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll, I'll think. If, I'll, I'll take a moment and think before I answer. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> If you could view a sunset anywhere in the world, now you being in Athens, you're seeing some pretty ones there on the island, I'm sure. Mm. But if you could view a sunset anywhere in the world with with Kathy, where would it be? Ooh, probably be on the front porch of one of my kids' houses holding my grandbaby. You know what? I was telling Jarrett yesterday. Uh most of my, most 99.9% .9 of the answers I get on that are my back porch or my front mm. porch. Now that's the first one I've had holding my grandbabies, but that's awesome, mm. bro. Yeah. I'm a, so if, when you, if you and Kathy, if you had a dream vacation, where would it be? Oh man. If there's someplace you haven't had a chance to see or, or go to or visit in the world, what would you, what would you like to go see? Dream vacation. Ah, goodness. Um, you know, it changes. It, it, five years ago, I would have had one answer to that. Um, today, I, I probably have an answer. And then in 10 years, I may have a completely <laughs> different answer. But I, I just think that, uh, yeah, I don't know. The word vacation is always Every time I go on a vacation, I come back as like, oh, I need a vacation. I'm worn out from, <laughs> you know what I mean? But I, I, I thought I was the only one that did that. Yeah, no, no. It's great to go and see things, but there truly for me, there's no, I mean, we're gone half the year, you know, and when we're home, we're out of the country six months of the year and we still put 22,000 miles on a car. I mean, and so half of our mission is going and, and you know, telling the story. Um, but man, to really, to truly find a, a, a place of peace and rest, there's no place like home uh, in doing that. And I, I just think that we get lost, uh, you know, that, what do they say? The grass is always greener on the other side and you get over there and it's like, man, but the grass is home and it's awesome. And yeah. so I think that we, it, it's good to get away but there's nothing like coming, coming home. Um, that's good, brother. No, that's yeah. really good. That's what my wife and I both say. We have the, we, we have the home that we have. We have a pool for the first time. And, well, and she's like, Hey, we'll just do staycations. We'll just do vacation right here. Yeah. They have a name for it now called a staycation, but yeah, yeah. no, but it, it, it's uh, as great as it is to leave this. It's always even greater to, to come, come back home. So, uh, yeah, uh, but anywhere over the beach is good. Uh, Kathy loves the sea. Um, you know, she's not really, you know, people that say, oh, I love the beach. They, that means they love to suntan. She, you know, she doesn't really do that. She loves the two foot area where the water meets the ocean. And there's oh, just wow. something magic that happens right there. Cause you know, there's all the crustaceans and the shells and, and all of that. And she could just live in that little two foot spot. But um, man, uh, I, I'm trying to remember the Christian artist that wrote this song, but uh, I think it was Susan Ashton, but she said, you know, it, it, it's you, oh God, that that tells the sea that's as far as you go, you know, uh, where the water meets the land. And there's just something about the glory of God and that endless uh, in and out of the tides and the power uh, and the sound and man, it's just, uh, so anywhere in that two foot area, that's a vacation for Kathy and I. Oh, that's awesome, bro. That is, yeah. that is totally awesome. So AccuCenter.org, is that a website or is that just, you, you have that's a, a website? website AccuCenter.org. So uh, people... all, all the videos I'm talking about there, there's a link to those on there and you can see what we do and why we do what we do and, and uh, talk about the plight of the refugees and, 
I'm running uh, a mile off the Turkish coast tomorrow, and I'm going to meet people right off the raft. Uh, two years ago, I did that, and I had a guy come through the door, and he said, I know you. And I said, well, you just got here, and I don't think we've ever met. And he said, no, I know you from the video in Afghanistan. Oh, wow. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> So the internet's good, John. From six thousand miles away, we're talking about Jesus, and uh, it's it's something that uh, you know what it's it's like like you know Scripture says what man means for evil, uh, I'm going to use for my glory, and that's exactly what has happened in the lives of these refugees, and that's exactly what happens in every every piece of new technology that we come up in the world. Um, God will find a way to use it for His glory. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so listen, folks, go to accuracenter.org. You can get your, there's videos there. If you feel so compelled and you want to help support Larry and Kathy, you probably do it through their contact him. Uh, however you want there, to do that. There's a, a way to do it on the page there. So on the, awesome. on the website. Yeah. So I, I encourage you to do that. If you feel, if you're, if, you know, if your heart leads you to do so, I'm sure Larry and Kathy would really appreciate that. Hey, I want to give a quick shout out to Chad and 400 productions at locals.com, 400 productions.com, 400 productions on all your podcast platforms. We're now on Spotify. If you have a hard time reaching it, just hit me up in the comments section and Chad and I are one. We'll try to, to get back to you and get you that link. We're, it's it's all brand new to us. We're trying to figure out how to work, go through Spotify now. Um, YouTube's starting to give some pushback, even on Christianity. If you talk about your faith on here mm -hmm. now, they'll they're 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 I don't know. They're trying to censor it or somehow or something. I'm gonna preach, bro. I don't care how it is. I mean, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna spread the gospel. So you can, if you want to, yeah, if you want to help Chad and Four Hundred Productions to help us here with what we do, you can do that at the Four Hundred Productions Locals .com website there's a way there that you can also uh be part of it larry hang out one second i know you got to go hang on one second on the back side here i'm gonna get us out of here and uh we'll say we'll say bye on the back side thanks again larry i appreciate it brother Absolutely. i love you man it's been a privilege thank you mm -hmm.